So hello everyone, uh, this is Richard Morley here from Cochrane and I'd just like to welcome you to our um, webinar. Uh, we're just waiting for people to join. We've got eight people attending at the moment and we have about 20 signed up. So um, we'll be getting underway shortly. So hello everyone, uh, this is Richard Morley, just uh, welcoming uh, those people who've uh, joined uh, so far. Uh, I can see uh, people signing in and joining our call. Uh, we're up to 14 now out of uh, 20 people who've registered. So if we'll just wait a few more moments for uh, the last people to join us and then we'll begin. Okay, everyone, uh, I think uh, we seem to have reached uh, a stable number of people who've joined us. We've got 15 people who've joined us online. And so I think we might make a start on our uh, webinar. So uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, good morning here in the UK. Um, I'm not quite sure what time it is where you're joining, but you're very welcome to um, our webinar about the International Network for Public Involvement and Engagement in Health and Social Research. And before we start, I'll just uh, quickly explain how you can be a part of this uh, webinar. And we hope that uh, you'll be able to join in and take an active part in webinars. Webinars are a, quite a strange thing to be part of, but I hope there'll be ways in which you can uh, take part, speak, ask questions, and take part in polls. So <clears throat> you should be able to see a panel in front of you. Uh, I've got a picture of it uh, on screen. And you can use that question panel to ask questions and to make comments and can post into that little box there. You can also raise your hand um, to be unmuted. You, can, you should be able to see a little hand uh, icon. So if you click on that, um, I'll be able to see that and then uh, unmute your microphone if you're able to, 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 to join in in that way. <clears throat> Everyone's muted at the moment, but uh, I can unmute you and then you can speak to uh, the people who are on this call. I also just want to let you know that we're recording the session. Uh, this is as much as anything to create a record so that we can look back at um, the comments, uh, that were made, the progress uh, through our webinar, <clears throat> and perhaps use some of those comments uh, in our deliberations in future. So 
Uh, today, we're just going to touch uh, on these things. Um, we're going to introduce to you the people who are um, our joint presenters on this webinar. We're going to talk about the vision for the network. We're going to give you uh, some uh, information from the survey that we've been running. <clears throat> uh, we're going to talk about the launch uh, that was held in November and the key challenges that emerge from that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, our vision, mission and objectives. And that's something that I hope you'll be able to help <clears throat> uh, help us shape uh, both today and at a meeting which we'll be telling you about later. We'll just briefly tell you about what's coming up next and how you can be involved. And then there'll be opportunities uh, to answer, ask questions and we'll try and answer those and perhaps get some kind of discussion uh, going. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, there's a survey uh, which we'd like you to take part in. Um, if you have time, we'll give you the link for that uh, to answer some questions about what you've heard today. So that's uh, briefly what we're going to be talking about during the next hour. Uh, just to let you know that uh, there are um, other presenters on the call, not just me from uh, Cochrane. We've got Heather Badley from Comet. We've got Simon Denegree from the National Institute of Health Research here in the UK. We have Gary Hickey from NIHR Involve. And that's me, Richard Morley from Cochrane. Uh, we're hoping that Sophie Staniszewska from Warwick University uh, will also be joining us, but she's not on the call at the moment, but I'm, I'm hoping that she'll be able to join us soon. <clears throat> so we're going to kick things off. Uh, I'm going to like to invite Simon Den Denegree just to uh, say hello and, and to introduce the international network to you. Simon, do you want to go ahead? Thank you very much, uh, Richard, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think Richard's given an excellent and clear introduction to the webinar, <clears throat> and I'm very excited uh, that this is our first um, public event after we uh, launched the network uh, very successfully way back in, in November. I just want to say a few words to give people a little bit of a background of, of how we are, where we are today. I think um, as uh, the four organizations that are hosting the call today with you, um, I think we have made a number of observations in the early part of last year. None of these observations, I'm sure, will be new to the people on the webinar this morning. Um, the first is that uh, there is a growing movement in public involvement in health research health and social care research, which crosses, uh, crosses all continents uh, and crosses the globe. And that's a very exciting development uh, and one that um, we want to capture the energy uh, and the experience and expertise of as much as possible uh, as we go forward. The second, I think, uh, feature is that we want to uh, we felt there was a real need and a desire, and this is what we heard when people came to visit us or we went to visit them in other countries. There was a real desire to be more connected uh, with one another and to be able to share more information and have the sorts of conversations that are going to help us do uh, ever better things in the name of public involvement in health and social care research. So that desire to be connected was very strong, I think, indeed, um, and continues to be so. I think the third one, there is a very strong sense that we can probably all achieve a lot more uh, if we come together than if we continue to be separate and disparate parts of the public involvement uh, movement in our respective countries or nations. And so again, we felt that by bringing our expertise and experience together, uh, we felt we could do a great deal, not just to help people in their own nations, uh, and I think people are obviously going to be at different stages of public involvement in health research, but also perhaps influence uh, other global actors, um, for instance, uh, the World Health Organization, about their attitudes and focus on public health, uh, public involvement in health and social care research. So that was uh, having sort of heard and listened to that over a, a significant period of time. I think the, the honest truth is that the time was right to step into the space and begin to try and bring a global network together uh, to 
begin to do some of the things uh, you are going to hear about uh, during the rest of the presentation uh, this morning and I hope will excite you uh, and I hope you will uh, feel you want to be part of. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a background and um, back to Richard. Thank you, Simon. Uh, thank you. So while we're just thinking about that, I'm going to launch a couple of polls so that we can find out a little bit more about who uh, is on the call. Um, so the first one is, um, if you could uh, tell us uh, whereabouts you're calling from, whereabouts you're joining this webinar. <clears throat> and um, I can only give you five options, unfortunately, on a poll of this sort. Uh, so what we've done is, is picked um, uh, continents. And so, yes, I can see people taking part in the, in the poll at the moment. Uh, and I shall close it in a moment and then share the results with you. Right, that looks like everybody's taken part. So I'm going to close the poll now and then just share it with you. <clears throat> so it would seem that uh, around half of the people who are taking part in the call today are from Europe with about a fifth from uh, the Americas, so um, North and South America, Canada. We've got um, <clears throat> uh, people also joining us from Asia, from Africa and from Australasia as well. So that's an interesting spread of people from uh, uh, around the world, which is really good. Um, so I'm also going to uh, launch um, a second poll uh, to find out a little bit more about you. <clears throat> so there's another poll here, which you can uh, now see, hopefully. Uh, so this can tell us where, what kind of organisation it is that you're um, you're part of in this context. Um, whether you're from a university, from a research organization, from an organization that supports patient involvement, whether you're from a voluntary or third sector or health organization or, or other, other type of organization. <clears throat> and I can see people responding, so thank you very much for that. Uh, that looks like everyone might have taken part now. So I shall close that and then share the results with you. So hopefully you can see the results now. And it looks like, um, well, 58% of, of people are from a university. So that's just over half. <clears throat> a third are from a different kind of research organization. I presume that includes organizations like Cochrane that I work for. About a third from organizations to support patient involvement and a quarter, well, 25% from uh, voluntary or third sector organizations and 17% um, from other organizations. So that adds up to over 100%, I think, <laughs> uh, with my not very good math. So people are clearly from different, you know, joining with different perspectives um, and from different, you know, more than one organizations, which shows the complexity of what we're trying to do, I think, as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, what we'll do now is um, oops, um, invite uh, the representatives from the organizations that have helped get us to where we are um, so far, just to, to say a little bit about themselves and um, uh, why they're part of this international network. So Heather, would you want to, to go ahead? Yeah, hello everybody. Um, I'm Heather Bagley. Um, I'm two, two hats that I wear. So I'm a public contributor in research uh, myself as a parent. I'm involved mainly in children's research, uh, but I'm also a patient public involvement coordinator work, working for an international outcomes initiative called COMET, which stands for the Core Outcome Measures in Effectiveness Trials Initiative. And our work focuses on agreeing important and relevant outcomes for use in clinical research. And multiple stakeholders are involved in reaching consensus about which outcomes are the most important or core for a particular condition. And patients and carers are obviously key stakeholders in this. Um, Comet promotes the development of you and use of core outcome sets throughout the world. And it produces resources to support core outcome set developers in their work. 
So internationally, core outcome set developers need guidance and support in patient public involvement and engagement. And really being able to connect with people involved in patient public involvement internationally is potentially really helpful for these core outcome set developers and for me and my role in, in sort of signposting people. Um, and obviously it's also important to raise awareness about what Comet's doing am amongst those kind of organisations as well. So that was kind of a strong emphasis in terms of my involvement. Um, and obviously research is increasingly international and taking part in research has many similar challenges globally, um, including within core outcome sets. Um, and obviously I believe that the patient and public voice is crucial in these international networks, as, as, as crucial as it is in local and national networks. Um, so the, the patient and the public voice is essential in developing and governing this international PPI network. So that's that from me, Richard. And there's also on, on there, there's my web, our, our website for comments as well, if you wanted to see that. Lovely, Heather, thank you for that. Um, uh, so I'll just say a, a, a few brief words. Um, so I'm Richard Morley from uh, Cochrane. Um, I've been interested in uh, the idea of a, uh, an international network for patient and public involvement uh, since 2015. Uh, I've, I've been working with Cochrane uh, for a while now, but I also work with the James Lind Alliance as well. And uh, it, it seemed to me that research was, uh, that I was getting involved in was increasingly international. Um, Cochrane, for example, has 37,000 contributors across um, many, many countries, 100 countries. And, um, uh, but there was a diffic difficulty in involving people because there were different approaches towards patient and public involvement or consumer involvement across the, the world. Uh, and um, it would, I, I felt um, that it would be important to, to try and join that work up together so that we could work better together and support one another in this, in this difficult thing that we were trying to do. I even blogged about it in 2015, which is that uh, 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 screenshot there from my blog. I no longer blog. Uh, uh, I felt that something like this, an, an international net network like this, would be really important. Um, it's important that we can share and work together, join us all, all up so that we can work to the same ends, but also important because we can be critical and, le and learn about the process so that we can do it better. Uh, and we can spread to places where um, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's still an idea and, and not a developed, um, a developed idea. So that was that was my reason for for uh, being part of this uh, network and and trying to help establish it. Um, Simon, do you want to uh, say something at this point yeah. about your involvement? Yeah. Yes, thank you again, Richard. So uh, it's Simon Denigree here um, again. Uh, so I am the National Institute for Health Research National Director for Patients, Carers and the Public um, in the UK. And uh, I have been in that role for the last uh, six years. And up until the end of last year, I was the chair of Involve. I'm sure that many of you on the webinar will be aware that since the National Institute for Health Research was established in 2006, um, and uh, we have involved uh, patients, carers and the public in making our funding decisions, and in fact, in all our activities as the largest uh, government funder of health research, health and social care research in the UK. Um, and that's really been the expectation that we've increasingly set with the research community and that has enabled us to do uh, new and greater things, I think, um, in research to improve people's uh, health and care. An important uh, agent of the way that we actually um, embed public involvement in NHR's work is Involve, and I'm sure almost everybody on the call has probably heard of Involve. Uh, Involve is uh, the organisation that we have funded uh, at NHR since 2006. And um, it has a range of uh, roles out there, but one of the most important is to provide people with help and briefings and guidance uh, and practical uh, support to enable them to find their way through uh, uh, the ways of doing public involvement. And that could be uh, a public contributor coming to us or a researcher who came to us. It doesn't matter. We are there to help and support people understand public involvement and um, put it into practice in their own context, whatever that context is. 
And I think for Involve, our experience is the fact that, um, as I've sort of uh, alluded to uh, earlier in the webinar, uh, very much our work has taken us into many different parts of the globe. We've uh, grown, uh, recognized that it's a growing uh, global movement. Um, the survey that uh, you'll hear about later shows that it's extending across many different countries and taking many different forms. Uh, we're very interested in building relationships and building networks and uh, ensuring that they're sustainable over the long, long term. I think we uh, really feel that for public involvement to work, uh, it's about recognising it's a relationship, not an intervention, and it's something that needs to be built up over a considerable period of time. Uh, and we know that from our own experience of doing our work, that our work is connecting people and insights and experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And that actually helps us to influence whole research systems, whether they be national ones or international ones. And I suppose there's a, at the bottom of that slide, you'll see an old adage, uh, which is a problem shared is an opportunity made. And we really do believe that involve in involve and uh, the NIHR. And I think and that's very much why uh, we want to be part of this uh, global network. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Simon. Uh, and Sophie, I, I, I believe is on the call. Um, are I you there, am. Sophie? I am Fabulous. indeed. Well, welcome. Uh, would you would you like to uh, s say a few words? Also, yes. Um, I guess part of our area of interest is around how we draw on and develop the evidence base internationally um, for a whole range of reasons, including. Um, utilising evidence for best practice, uh, but also, in a way, creating different forms of legitimacy in different contexts as well. So what we see happening is a rapidly evolving evidence base um, in lots of different countries. And I think we are keen to link up with people and understand the whole range of different approaches, different ways of thinking and different concepts that are present. So it's about learning from each other um, in a really powerful way. Um, I think our thinking at the moment is really that a uh, high quality evidence base can help drive practice. It can make sure that we focus on things that are we know work well. And from our perspective, there's something about, I think, um, avoiding waste in practice, which sounds a bit sort of negative, but it is about making sure that what we do is the best that we, we can do. And certainly in an academic context, evidence is a very powerful argument and um, it's one that we want to sort of draw on and develop. But we're also very mindful that evidence um, means different things to different people. And so we are keen to also develop concepts of evidence and knowledge which are broader than um, perhaps we have now as well. So things like um, patient-based evidence, experiential forms of evidence are very powerful in this area and we want to make sure they're present. The sort of cross-national and cross-cultural collaboration is, is vital and we already see evidence of that emerging, but I think there's so much potential for um, closer working and learning from each other and um, a, a greater sharing of concepts and, uh, and approaches and it is about sort of joining forces in a way internationally to to develop um, the evidence base, develop a research agenda and I think for, from my perspective it, it's much more powerful doing it in that way than within a single country context where we try very hard to move things forward but I think a greater power will come with that cross-national collaboration. And of course, uh, from my perspective, with our um, research involvement and engagement journal, we, we are really keen to publish all the fantastic work that goes on and add to that evidence base um, of, of thinking. And um, for those of you who might not have come across our journal, it is a co-produced journal um, with patients and academics and researchers working together to review papers and um, with my co-editor-in-chief Richard Stevens who is a who is a patient we are trying to change the nature of academic publishing um, and to make it more open make it more transparent and make and, and enable the sort of concepts it's reporting to be co-produced so all the way through um, and I think for me it is about this real, really strong sense of joining together internationally to, to, and it sounds ambitious, but to create paradigm change in in how we think about a research in its culture and in its practice. So, more and more powerfully embedding um, our thinking into um, what we 
talk about as the sort of heart of methods and methodology, the real bones of research, trying to, to, to move that forward. So it's a very ambitious agenda, but I think through a network like this, there is enormous power and potential. So that is my hope for the future. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, Right, before we move on to the next uh, section, which is uh, I'm going to invite uh, uh, Gary Hickey to talk about uh, a survey that we've been running, which many people have, uh, uh, on the call perhaps have taken part in. I just, just want to remind you that um, you're also able to uh, submit questions or comments in your comment box, and we'll try and answer those uh, either as we go along or at the end. Um, and don't forget, you can also uh, raise your hand um, by clicking on the hand uh, icon um, if you want to join the conversation as well. So, um, Gary, would you like to uh, talk about the survey uh, uh, and the results? Thank you, Richard. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm just going to give you a, a very brief overview of the survey that I think you all have completed um, on joining the network. And it will just give you a flavor of where we're at, at the moment. Uh, in the first instance, we uh, invited 46 organizations to respond to this survey. Uh, we're absolutely delighted to say that actually 149 uh, organizations have responded. We did, of course, ask the 46 organizations to distribute the survey to colleagues that they thought might be interested. Uh, and this is 149 responses, and that's up from 79 when we last reported on these findings at the launch in November. Next slide, please, Richard. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the organisations uh, from from which uh, 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 respondents are, are from, we've got a real mix of organisations here, as you can see from this slide. Um, uh, so we've got universities, we've got other research organisations and organisations that support public involvement. And this is a slide, I have to say, are, are findings that, that really pleases me. So I think there was a concern uh, initially that we may get organisations perhaps just from one particular sector. But as you can see here, we have a, a range of organisations. In terms of the countries from which respondents are from, well, th this has really grown um, in, since, since we uh, launched the, the network. And it feels now that it is truly a global network. And it was a concern I know that was expressed at the launch uh, in November that we needed to broaden our appeal. Um, and I think we've done that. And, and since November, we've got Croatia, India, New Zealand, Vietnam, Zimbabwe, to name just a few. Uh, so that's uh, um, added to the range of countries which are included um, in the network. And now we come, I think, to, to, to the core bit, and we'll touch on this again later when we talk about the vision and mission objectives. We ask people to uh, list uh, their top five, five priorities for the network for the first 12 months. Um, and I think you can see, I'll just give you a chance to, to, to look at this slide. Uh, but if you look towards the bottom, if you like, they were obviously the most uh, um, popular choices for people. Um, and I think it's still this idea that collectively uh, people want to work in developing uh, the framework of public and patient involvement. People's main choices are very much about the, the how to of public and patient uh, involvement. So we've got developing standards and policies, training and learning, guidelines, tools and tips, and of course, uh, developing the research evidence base. Um, but we'll touch on these again when we talk about the vision, the mission and objectives, because of course it's findings from here that have informed the thinking on perhaps where we want to go with our vision, mission and objectives. So thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Uh, yes, um, just to say again that if anyone has any questions or um, uh, wants to uh, talk, ask a question or post it, there's an opportunity. And if anyone wants to ask any questions about the survey, there's a great chance uh, now to do it. And I can see uh, Anne McKenzie has raised her hand. So Anne, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi Anne, do you want to, do you want to uh, say something at this point? I do, um, hi everyone. I just wanted to ask all of you, but particularly Gary, are we able to sort of share those results, you know, just to, 
let people, I mean, I don't mean on websites and things, but I mean just in presentations to sort of tell people what we're part of? I certainly have no objection to that. And if anything, I, I would actually encourage that. I don't know how everyone else feels. Uh, I'd be very happy if, if people would, would share it. Um, and if it would help, and if other people felt that this was appropriate, I think we could perhaps put, put the results together in a, in a more user-friendly way for you, maybe, yeah, like a slide set or something like that. What, yeah. what do other, yeah. other people? I think that'd be really helpful for me to be able to say, I mean, we're a long way from you guys, and to be able to say that, you know, we, well, we, you know we're really excited to be part of all of this and feel that, you know, we can learn heaps, but also we may have something to contribute, but it's always good to be able to show my powers that be, mm -hmm. you know, what we're part of and what we're contributing to. So I'd, I'd be really pleased if you could share something that I could utilise like that. Thank, thank you, Anne. I mean, and the other thing that's probably worth mentioning is that um, after, after this uh, webinar will circulate the presentation as well so you'll straight away get some of those slides and that information but um, yeah thank thank you and and it's uh, good to hear your voice um, okay if there are no uh, other questions at this particular moment um, uh, perhaps we can move on to the launch of the of the uh, network um, and um, Perhaps I could just briefly mention this, that um, on the 27th of November uh, in London, we, we launched, you know, we fired the starting gun really for, for uh, the international network. And 33 people from 10 countries came together. Uh, the, uh, there was a wide range of people who, who came from um, PPI practitioners and managers, members of the public uh, who were or public contributors, as Heather called them, researchers, policymakers, and health professionals came came together to be part of this uh, event. Uh, <clears throat> we spent the day together in uh, dis debate and discussion uh, and learning from one another. Uh, in the morning, we talked about the different kinds of health systems and cultures that impact uh, on the progress of patient and public involvement in research. Uh, it was a, it's a fascinating discussion. It revealed all kinds of uh, challenges and opportunities, uh, 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 different, different cultures, the geographies that we're working in, different health and social care systems. Uh, and I think the thing that united us all was that, um, that view that we shared about the importance of shifting power uh, in research and funding so that uh, public views and experiences can be taken into account and a, a legitimate a part of the conversation uh, and impact on research. We talked about how we might develop a shared vision for the network, about how we could broaden and deep, deepen patient and public involvement in research, as Sophie mentioned about uh, the, the importance that uh, important role that patient and public involvement in research can uh, play in reducing waste in research, which is a, a major issue for researchers and patients across the globe. We talked about how we can do it better and how working internationally collective, in, interna internationally and in a collective process can, can contribute to that. Um, and amongst other things about how we can help researchers and research organizations uh, see the benefits of patient and public involvement. In the afternoon, we also talked about how we might make the network a reality. <clears throat> I think we were very, very strong on uh, developing the shared view that this was an important initiative and something that um, that we all supported and wanted to take forward. The more challenging aspect, I think, is um, about how we can turn it into a reality and make it uh, operational. So we talked, we identified some of the issues that we needed to think about. You know, how to how do we convene a network like this? How do we communicate? internationally um, how do we promote that collaboration um, issues that we're going to be picking up uh, later on uh, about governance membership um, the nature of a true partnership and how we crucially how we secure the resources to, to make this a reality 
Um, here's a quote from Simon. I hope Simon's not too embarrassed because he is on the call, but uh, but I think Simon summed this up very, very neatly and uh, have been using this in our newsletter. Uh, it, I think it's true that everyone came away from that event uh, excited and enthused, but also uh, real, realistic and pragmatic about the challenges uh, ahead. And um, Tessa Richards from the BMJ also came along to that launch and um, she wrote a blog uh, post um, about it, which, uh, which was excellent. And uh, we've been promoting that, promoting the links to it. Uh, and so this is what she said, that, uh, that there's an ethical imperative to involve patients in the public in research. Um, and, but also, taking that into account and having said all of that, that there's a real challenge of, of turning it into a global social movement and that we need to bear that in mind if that's what we're trying to do. This is a complex, difficult area that we're working in and we need to move carefully as we go forward. So that was a launch. I mean, from my perspective, um, it was a really exciting day um, and it was great to see the work that we've been putting, putting into this to, to come to fruition. But that's not the end of the task. It's the start of uh, the task. And so now, uh, Gary, I wonder if I can invite you just to talk about uh, the vision, developing the vision, mission and objectives. Thank you very much, Richard. Yeah, I'm going to present to you today three examples of what a, our vision and mission and some of the objectives might look like. Uh, and when developing these examples, I drew obviously on the survey findings. Uh, and also discussions that we had at the launch of the network. Uh, and today, I've, I see this very much a continuation of that. And I stress that it is a discussion here, uh, and it's something that we're going to revisit again when we have our next uh, uh, event um, in May uh, of this year, much of which uh, we'll talk about um, um, later. So just as a reminder, here are the, the slide on the priorities for the first 12 months again. And obviously, and this really did heavily inform how we went uh, about developing these visions and missions. Uh, and the three examples I'm going to now present to you, I think, reflect three different themes, if you like, that I think have emerged from the survey findings uh, and also from discussions at the launch and subsequent discussions I've had with various um, individuals uh, um, since then. If we could move on, uh, Richard, great, thank you. So here's example one. So the vision would be a health and social care research world in which high quality involvement of the public is the norm. And the mission would be to work with policymakers, research funders, the research community and public to raise and promote international standards and public involvement in research and build the capacity for public involvement in organizations by sharing experiences, knowledge and expertise. Now, I think the key theme here, and as I say, this came from the, the survey responses and discussions, is the focus on normalizing public involvement in research and capacity building. And I think this captures this captured in this vision um, and this mission. So again, your thoughts and comments would be very much appreciated. Example number two, please, uh, Richard. This one, we've got a vision, a world of global partnerships promoting and encouraging public involvement in health and social care research. That would be the vision. And the mission would be to work with policymakers, research funders, the research community and public across the world to raise and promote standards in public involvement in research by sharing experiences, knowledge and expertise. And the theme here is very much on partnerships in public involvement. Uh, and you could see that, uh, I think, in the research findings, people wanted to work together uh, to develop tools, et cetera. Uh, and also, this reflects that since the, the launch of the network, I've had several queries from people from across the globe um, suggesting that the network could be used to enable them to partner up with other people involved in public involvement. And that might be a facility uh, uh, that the, the network uh, um, could adopt uh, and might be useful to people. So this one reflects very much that idea of partnership working in public involvement. And the final example, uh, the vision might be something like 
a research world where public involvement is normalized as part of high quality research. And the mission could be something like create leverage to change research cultures in health and social care research. And the focus here or the theme here, I think is very much on this idea of paradigm shifts, of using the network to achieve some kind of cultural change. So there are three themes there, I think, that go through those examples. The first one was about normalizing PPI and research capacity building. The second one was the focus was on partnerships. Uh, and the third one was on paradigm shifts and cultural change. Now, it might be that we want to include, of course, all of those themes on our eventual vision and missions, but this is very much a continuation of that discussion. So your views are very much welcomed. From there, uh, we started thinking about um, what the objectives would be, if you like, or, or the work streams. Uh, and again, and, and I've just uh, uh, identified a few key things, again, that I think come from the survey findings and discussions we had at launch. And, I, and I'll just go through these very quickly. I'll read them out to you. Uh, so one might be to demonstrate the impact of public involvement in research, uh, which I think was the fourth most popular uh, um, priority area for people, um, to work with lower and middle income organisations to learn from and build their capacity for public involvement in research. A third one, to develop platforms, mechanisms for sharing experiences, knowledge and expertise. Uh, a fourth one, to develop international standards and policies for public involvement. A fourth one, to promote and raise awareness of public involvement in research. Uh, and a fifth one, to facilitate public involvement uh, in research partnerships. So that's my our thoughts at the moment uh, on vision, mission, objectives. I want to stress this is a continuation of discussion. We won't be actually deciding anything now, and we will revisit uh, um, this thing uh, um, in May twenty uh, second of this year. Uh, and I think Richard now has uh, um, some uh, a chance for people to go to the polls again. Yeah, thanks, Gary. That's uh, really interesting. Uh, I've got a quick poll, which I'm going to launch uh, just for an instant reaction. Uh, so uh, just seeing what people think uh, about this, uh, about the, what, what you've heard. Um, would you like to say uh, which of these uh, options that you <clears throat> might prefer? Uh, one, two or three, a mixture of the above or something else entirely? And whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to say uh, this. Um, we've launched uh, a survey, and we'll give you the link uh, later on, where um, after this call, uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, join, the, join the, the survey and let us have some feedback about, um, about what you think the mission, the vision, the objectives of the network should be. Uh, it's uh, a short, very short uh, online survey. And that would be really helpful if you could take part in that and give us some feedback, not only just about what Gary's spoken about now, but the whole the, the whole thing and what your thoughts about uh, might be for the for the network going forward. And what we'll do with that information <coughs> uh, is uh, add it to the second webinar, which is taking place on Thursday, and take that to a, a meeting which is coming up, and we'll tell you more about that shortly. So you can see people uh, taking part in the uh, survey. So thank you very much for that. Uh, still collecting responses. Um, all right, thank you. It looks like everybody's completed and I'll share the results of that. Um, so hopefully you're seeing that uh, on your screen now. An interesting uh, spread of results um, and the clear um, Winner, if we're thinking about it in those terms, is that um, that 69% of uh, of the votes went to a, a mixture of of the of the three um, visions and missions that Gary outlined, <clears throat> with a fairly even spread uh, across uh, the the three different models. So thank you very much for that. Um, like I say, uh, you'll be able to uh, let us have further feedback um, in the form of our survey. Um, if anybody has any 
comments or questions at this stage, please do um, raise your hand and we can bring you into the conversation. Um, uh, and I can see uh, Janine uh, has raised her hand, so I'm going to unmute you now, Janine, and please, um, hello, uh, please uh, uh, make your comment or, uh, or your question, Janine, go ahead. Can, can you join us, Janine? Hello, Janine. Um, I think Janine wanted to say something, but I can't. I can't hear you, Janine. Um, Could you post the question? Could you post the question on the side? Yeah. If we can't hear you, Janine, do feel free to yeah to write your question in the question box, and we'll try and pick it up uh, at the end. I'm really really sorry about that. Um, uh, but thanks for trying. <laughs> I know this is not an easy platform, um, uh, technology to, to take part in. <clears throat> it does feel, Richard, I'd just say that, that, that looking at that, that initial response from people, that yeah. we, we seem to have captured the, the themes, the right themes, if you like. It's just how we, how we uh, uh, um, paint that picture, if, if, if you will, uh, and combine yeah. them. But no one was suggesting that we needed something um, um, totally uh, different obviously it's very pleasing so it feels like we're broadly all on the same page it does yeah thank you very much for that uh gary um good right okay uh <laughs> heather can you tell us now um about what's next and how people can be involved yeah <clears throat> so um well, as Richard, a lot of these things have already been said. So as Richard said earlier on, we've been running this survey for quite a few months now. Um, and that's the original survey um, and it's still open. So if people haven't responded and wanted to respond or want to share the link with other organizations that might be relevant, they encourage you to do that. Um, so that's the first um, uh, survey that you can see on, on, the, on the first bullet. And then the survey that also Richard mentioned based on today's discussion uh, is the second uh, survey monkey bullet. So if you'd like to take part in that, that'd be fantastic. That will really help our thinking, <coughs> excuse me, going forward. Um, we have a, a Twitter hashtag where you can keep informed, which is hashtag global PPI network. Uh, so it'd be great to see some activity on there as well, please. Um, and as has already been mentioned, we're going to be having a face-to-face -face meeting in May, which you'll also be able to join online. Um, the meeting is going to be on the 22nd of May at the Royal Society in London. In terms of what we're going to do at that meeting, we'll be defining the aims and objectives of the network and obviously using the feedback from these webinars to form part of that discussion and the feedback that hopefully you can provide through the survey. Um, we'll be discussing the governance and the future structure of the network. We'll be considering the impact of patient public involvement in research uh, and considering the challenges and opportunities of developing this international network and also discussing patient public involvement in low and middle income com countries. We're hoping to run a workshop at the Cochrane Colloquium in Edinburgh in September. Uh, but we're also keen to get more people involved in this core planning and development group. And if you're interested in doing that, you can send expressions of interest to Gary Hickey, whose email will be on the last slide. Um, we have had a, a bit of interest already, so people will be asked for uh, just some kind of statement explaining their interest in joining the group. But Gary will explain that to you uh, via email. Um, so that's that, I think. Good. Thank you very much for that, uh, Heather. So um, this is still an ongoing process and um, uh, lots of ways uh, that we can uh, collectively help to shape this network. Um, and uh, now this is your chance. Uh, we um, That's the end of the formal presentation um, part of the, um, of the webinar. Uh, so now's your chance if you want to either ask a question or uh, submit a question. And I'm really pleased to see that there are quite a few people now submitting questions. So um, while I'm looking at those, I can see that Adele has raised her hand. So Adele, I'm going to unmute you and uh, please 
feel free to um, to speak. Go ahead, Adele. Hi, yes, thank you. Yes, it's Adele Horbin from the uh, Nottingham uh, Biomedical Research Centre. Uh, yes, a really good presentation. I was really uh, interested in the visions and mission examples put forward. And I think, I think for me, um, the one in terms of global partnerships is really where the network can really um, make great strides in terms of building the links. Because that, was a net, that is what a network is all about, is building the links. Um, but then also it's about um, the boundaries as well. So, for instance, the ultimate aim is to uh, normalise PPI and research. But it's understanding the boundaries of what the network can and can't do, for instance. So it can build up the partnership working, but then how much it actually influences direct practice is another thing. So it's just what I'm wondering about the sort of boundaries of, of the network. And also, I think crucial to that in terms of how much influence it has on the organizations involved is whether you've got people of real, of real influence involved in the network. Um, because with the best one in the world, if you don't have those people of influence, you can really change things then that might sort of stymie some of the, uh, the ambitions. So uh, I don't know if you have any comments on that at all. Thank, thank you, Adele. Good, good questions. Yeah. Uh, is that Simon here? Yes. I, <clears throat> Adele, good morning. And I think thank you for your questions. And they're really good ones. I certainly agree to you, with you on the point about um, having influential people within the network. And um, I think that's a question of... Um, uh, demonstrating its relevance and its importance and it's the way it's making a difference um, and thereby encouraging people to continue to be with us so I absolutely accept that point the, the the one I really wanted to come back to you on was that one about boundaries because I think you've in, you've actually picked quite an interesting example of the potential power of the of the global network which is around um, global partnerships Mm. And for me, it's about, I think, and this is where I think we want to hear from the community, when we're thinking about global partnerships, um, one of the boundaries might be, for instance, uh, that the network connects people, um, but it doesn't broker the arrangement. And by broker, I mean almost negotiate the terms of terms of that uh, coming together, which would be much more, um, uh, uh, much would require much greater work on behalf of, of the network. So I, so I think um, we probably have to play out these boundaries um, in each of the main work areas where we're intending to go forward. Uh, but I think partnerships, is, global partnerships, is quite an interesting one to test out. Mm, yeah. Can I just jump in there as well? I, th I mean, I th I, again, I think Adele really goes to the heart of the, uh, the matter. So thank you for that, Adele. I mean, if you adopt an extreme position, we could have a route where the role of the network is facilitate partnerships, um, mm. which you could like to could do. Uh, another extreme would be where the network <laughs> role is against policy. Uh, and I think there's two extreme positions there. And, and I suspect that somewhere in between will, will be where we would lie. But that, that would be just my view. But I think you're right, Adele, about that. Where, where are the boundaries? And it's comes down fundamentally, I think, to what we see as the purpose um, of the network. Uh, uh. And, and also it's about the resources you put into it. So if, if the resources are, are, are somewhat limited, for instance, that might limit the scope of what you can do. And maybe it's best to sort of focus on one or two things rather than trying to do everything all at once. So uh, yeah, it all comes down to resources at the end of the day, really, doesn't it? I think. <laughs> um, just 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 to add to that, very briefly, Sophie here. Um, if people think that there are key um, influencers we ought to be engaging with, then please do contact us and let us know, because that is a really important part of developing that agenda. So thank you for raising that, Adele. Yeah, thank you, Adele. Um, so I'm pleased to. Uh, to say that people have been submitting questions and uh, Janine uh, tried to, to join, she's got a problem with a microphone, uh, as you recall that she put up her hand, but she submitted a question uh, online. And um, so Janine is from Rwanda uh, and she's based uh, both at Stellenbosch University in South Africa and the University of Rwanda. And um, so she's calling from Rwanda, but she's point, points out that she's, uh, she's kind of 
uh, representing both countries. She, she's uh, got a, a, a foot in both countries. But she wants to know, um, well, first of all, she says it's, it's been an interesting presentation and, and thinks it's a valuable network we're, we're, we're setting up. But she wants to know how this network would interact with the health systems research network. So I'm not familiar with that network and I don't, I wonder if um, any of uh, our panel uh, has heard of the Health Systems Research Network, um, Sophie, perhaps? Um, uh, and if if we don't know that particular particular network, but I suppose that there's a broader question of, of how this network interacts with other networks, research networks. But so, so Sophie, I don't like to I don't like to drop on you in that way. <laughs> but uh, I've done. If there's any comment that you might make about that. Um, thank you, Richard. Um, I, I don't know that specific network, um, but you raise a very important point and absolutely how do we maybe map out what other networks exist and how we can um, make sure that what we're doing is complementary to, to their efforts and where relevant join forces and work together in some way. So it's really important and it's a really key point around health systems because so much of there's a separation often between the research world and the systems world in terms of service provision. Um, and it's really critical those worlds are more closely linked. So absolutely vital um, that, that we um, we join forces. So thank you for that. We'll, 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 we will investigate and if there are people we should contact them, please do let us know and please do let us know if there are other networks out there we need to be aware of. So I think it's a gradual mapping exercise for us collectively with, with all your inputs. Thank, thanks, Sophie. Yes. Uh, so, Janine, it, it, I mean, it would be really great if you could stay involved and perhaps uh, uh, drop a note to Gary uh, uh, or um, make a comment on the survey when you, um, uh, if, if you complete that, that would be really great. So thank you very much for your for your um, for your question, um, Ad Adele uh, Murphy. Um, you've raised your hand, so uh, if that's okay, I'm going to invite you to uh, make your uh, question and make your point. I'm on, I'm unmuting you now, Adele. Adele, would you like to uh, to join the conversation? in Galway and I suppose I have a comment and, and a question and um, so in Ireland um, in the last maybe three or four years there's been a great surge in interest in and activity on the PPI front and just recently um, our health research board who are one of the main funders of health research have funded five universities in a small way, but at least five universities to develop PPI across their own university. So I, our university is one of them. So I'm a program manager here. And I suppose what I find interesting um, in the vision um, and mission statements so far is they're almost identical to the individual vision and mission statements of our university and presumably of four or five of the other universities as well. And um, things like culture change um, and in particular normalizing PPI. And um, that was one of the first comments when we spoke to a lay group for input into our strategy and vision. That was one of the first things that came from the group. So it's interesting to see that whether you're talking at a micro level or at a global international level, the same issues keep coming up. Um, so uh, that, that, that came across very strongly. And I suppose based on that then, I would be following on on the other EDEL's comment that really I think for this international network, you know, it is about maybe going beyond what the local is trying to do um, and looking at what can be gained from the international aspect to it. And I do think that it's the um, establishing partnerships and sharing um, sharing knowledge that isn't already being shared through academic publications. So more around the know-how, I think that has to be the focus because there's a limit to what can be done. So I have two questions. One is, what's your definition of an organization? So when you talk about 146 organizations or encouraging people to complete your survey what are you looking for and then I suppose my second one is around resources I think it's probably important for an international network different organizations different countries are going to be able to devote different levels of resources to this so I think whatever way it's set up it's got to be as inclusive as possible and for example I think running webinars is fantastic rather than having to travel to London on May the 22nd so I think you know that whole issue of resources not to exclude people because of the resource bar being set too high. 
Thank you very much, Adal. Um, some really good points and questions there. I wonder if any of our um, panel would like to pick up on any of those <coughs> questions. Um, it's Sophie here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Um, it's. I, I guess that, that. I think that's a really important set of points and questions. Um, I think just to touch on the. Uh, uh, the sort of, um, I guess, the, the, the local and the, the international in terms of research cultures. Um, it, I think there are lots of really important areas we can progress m collectively. And I guess part of this for us is trying to identify what what that might look like, um, and because it comes from our sense that in working individually as countries, the, the potential for change of research paradigms is much more limited because it is a driven it's an international paradigm and so we have to work at that international level to change it so um, hopefully there are resonances across universities and, and across other organizations um, but but I think um, there is something about uh, finding those areas of work we can collaborate on that actually lead to paradigm change and lead to that normalization so we're really keen to work with everybody to try and identify what those are because they're not a absolutely apparent at this point um, but the key influencers have a really key role to play in that and I, I, I in just picking up on the organization's um, comment I think probably our definition of an organization is quite fluid at the moment and maybe that's something we need to uh to to work on and i you know develop more in terms of the network but but very very key points i think that we need to have a think about mm, thank you very much go ahead just to add two things um for richard sorry and i think so yeah. uh, I, I think so given a splendid answer but i i two things i would of course uh, one of the challenges that we all face um, in the network, I think, is that in some instances, in some contexts, it won't be an organisation. It will be a person, um, and it may not, or a group of people who have um, come together fairly recently to try and promote and advance public involvement in their own context. So, uh, so that's, and we do not want to not help that need by focusing purely on formal organisations. Um, I think the second thing is I think we are very, very mindful of uh, inclusivity. Um, uh, we know that as a network, um, just holding face to face meetings in London is not going to be very friendly to the rest of the world. And we are absolutely conscious of that. I think that's why, hence we're doing things like webinars. That's also why we are intending and are, are in the process of expanding the, the planning committee to include people from around the world. But I think we, again, would be, really take people's guidance and thoughts and I'm sure very practical suggestions on, on how to work in an inclusive way, because I think um, the network is going to guide us about how to do this well. Thank you very much, Simon. I'm conscious that, that we're, we're now perhaps um, at, the, at the end of our um, time. Um, just to say that um, thank you to all the people who've been submitting comments and, and questions. And some of those have been about exactly that issue, Simon, about, about its inclusivity. But the fact that at the moment where it's very UK led, UK heavy uh, and research dominant, that's a question or a point from Carolyn Canfield. Um, uh, and there are other questions that people have submitted as well about how we take this forward in, a, in an inclusive um, and thoughtful way. Thank you very much for all your comments um, and um, we'll um, keep a note of those and, um, and um, feed them into our thinking uh, uh, as we move forward. So um, just to say, first of all, thank you very much for joining today. It's been really kind that you've given up your time and taken part and and I think the comments that have come back have been uh, really positive uh, but also um, critical in, in, in the sense you know of, of, of trying to make sure that what we do is is focused uh, on on, our, on clear objectives and needs so so thank you very much just to um, reiterate the points that Heather made there is still uh, the original survey that we took that's still live uh, so if you've joined but haven't taken part in that survey, um, we won't have your uh, details on, or your perspectives on, on the international network. So please, if you haven't done that, please do take our survey. And then there's a second survey, a much shorter one, which is about, uh, about the webinar. 
and it would be great if you could take some time just to respond to that and any points that you've made uh, or links that uh, that you've that you've raised or anything else that you think we'd like to draw to your attention you could you could um, complete that webinar uh, survey and let us have some feedback and also please feel free to write to Gary um, and with any other other comments so uh, before I finish I'm just going to ask uh, the co-presenters if there's anything that you'd like to say before we before we draw this to a, a close so Gary Heather Simon Sophie just, just a big echo. thank you <laughs> yes. yes a Good. big thank you fantastic okay so in that case, uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining today. Uh, it's been really good and exciting to uh, to to talk to people. So uh, goodbye, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye.